This is right on it. Sit. Oh, go in. Go in. Go in. Sometimes it's fair to say that club reviews come with a level of expectation and also a bit of predictability. However, in today's video, I'm going to look at two different irons that came with no level of expectation. And certainly in terms of predictability, I never thought I would experience quite what I have done with these two irons so far from a brand that quite frankly, I'd heard very little of. That's incredible, isn't it? So if you're a brand snob, then I suggest you look away now. But if your mind is open to trying new products, then uh, stick around because what I'm about to tell you, well, it'll be a big shock to uh, probably you as much as it was to me. So what you're looking at is two very different irons, both from the same brand, but both very, very different in the way they're put together. One is a hollow bodied, the other is a fully forged iron. I'm gonna start off this review by looking at the toughest end of the bag. These are two four irons. And watch this. Okay, so this brand is Tacomo. That's how I'm gonna pronounce it at least anyway. And they come from that world renowned country of making golf clubs that is Iceland. Now, these two clubs I came across pretty much on Instagram, I'll be honest with you. And I was first drawn to them by just how good these things look. They are so good on the eye that I was immediately drawn to them. And then I found out a little bit about how they're put together, how they're made, and also what they cost. So rarely do I start an iron review by hitting two four irons, but I think it's really important to see the ball flight of those two irons just how easy both of them were to pick that ball up and how well that ball shot off these club faces. Like I said, they are very, very different in the way they are made up. There's a very different feeling and sound from both of them, but equally impressive. Now, quite often what annoys you out there is when manufacturers make exaggerated claims in terms of what their golf clubs can actually do. And as a brand, well, Tacomo, they're no different. What if I told you that Tacomo 101T irons could make you a better lover? <laughs> that would be ridiculous. But then again, the 101Ts are forgiving, powerful, and versatile, which gives you more control over your game, which could help you play better golf and playing better golf would probably make you more confident. And everyone knows that confidence makes you better at other things. But what do we know? We just make really good golf clubs. And whilst I seriously suggest you follow their Instagram page, Tacomo have got a more serious tale to tell, but they tell it in a very subdued way. And that really interests me as well, because what they don't do is make exaggerated claims in terms of product technology. So Tacomo's story is very much reserved in terms of the claims they make. They've got two very simplistic approaches to these different irons. One, like I said, is hollow bodied at the stronger lofted end of the spectrum. And then they've got this other model, which is the 201, which is a fully forged muscle back iron. Now, as I've just said, they don't claim to make any ridiculous statements in terms of how good they're gonna make your golf. They're realistic. We all know that product technology can only do so much. But what I found from these irons is they do some things that can make the game a little bit more enjoyable and a little bit easier in some cases. This is right on it. Sit. Oh, go in, go in, go in. Oh my word, Han, how good would that have been? Right, those two bits of enjoyment that I referred to and making the game a bit easier, uh, well, there'll be different things to different people. That iron I just hit that's extremely close to the hole was the 201 forged iron. And what it does for me is it feels incredibly good, sounds incredibly good, and the all-out package in terms of performance is good, and I'll talk about that later. But the big key factor is well, how do you like, is feel and sound a key issue for you? And for me it is. So that's a real great bonus that I get out of the 201. 
If you move to the 101, it's quite a different head profile, and I would say more of the kind of uh, game improvement style line in terms of its size. It's a hollow body iron, and it's stronger lofted. And what that's doing is it's helping the ball launch incredibly high. It's powerful, to say the least, travels a good deal of distance, and therefore makes the game seem that little bit easier. Perhaps doesn't sound and feel as good as the 201, but like I said, it really does depend what it is that gives you your joy and happiness from striking an iron. Now, whilst I really want to talk to you about the, uh, well, the cost of these things, because the easiest way to do this review was to have the whole thing driven by just how low these are priced, because they're real key elements. But I also think it's perhaps a disservice just to talk about how low these cost, because it should be pushed to one side. But you can't ignore the fact that these are, well, breaking the mold. This direct-to-consumer model that is becoming really prevalent right now is making some real big statements in the price point. And just take a look at how much both of these sets are retailing at. Right, so now it's over to you in the comment section. And what I want to know is how many of you actually had heard of this brand first and foremost. And now you have heard of them, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that price point? What are your thoughts on the performance that you've seen so far in my hands? Because, uh, well, a bit of a spoiler alert, I'm mega impressed with these things. And, uh, well, I talked about expectation and they've exceeded it by far. Well, we talked about the long end of the bag and those four irons were super impressive in terms of ease of use, I suppose you'd call it. But at the other end of the game, uh, in terms of the pitching wedge, the shorter irons, there's a big difference between these two models. This is the 101, and for me, I've already said that sort of top line is perhaps a little bit bulky in the overall head mass. Not what I like to see in a dress, but for plenty, that's going to breed confidence. I'm going to hit a ball with this into what is a bit of a nasty pin that uh, Cardin is throwing at us today. And then talk about like one of the big key differences between the two sets of irons. Go a little bit further. Yeah, that's not bad control. I talked about Forge being really super good in terms of the way it feels, but what I've got to say is this 101 is also really impressive in terms of how they've got this to sound and to feel. Hollow body dying, don't forget that's going into a marketplace where it's got a lot of competition, some big boys out there, but I can tell you that this sounds as good, feels as good as every one of those models that's out there right now. a much better strike it's right on the flag sit down ball oh the difference with the 201 is just that feel is purer it's softer and again that's a personal preference thing and that profile is just that little bit it's by no means a kind of uh, a very much a thin blade like looking iron that top line has still got a bit of meat on it but it's a more compact profile heel to toe and that combined with that sound and feel they make it they make them two very very different irons and clearly aimed at very different players however what i will say is this forged iron would be put into that category of the better players iron i suppose but for me it's still very very playable and in terms of what i've seen in terms of launching the ball in terms of forgiveness i still think this is a club that like i said could fall into many different categories and be playable for many different levels of golfer it is all about which preferences you have Uh, the one thing for me is um, the 201s are just a little bit more playable as well. So I tried a similar shot just a little bit further back with both the different wedges. They're far too close, need a little bit of uh, distance taken off them. And I struggled to do that more with the 101 than I did with the 201. And again, just that refined overall club profile, but certainly in the uh, width of sole. It's a nice little way in which the uh, the pitching wedge is cambered and shaped, which would allow me to just open it up a little bit. So again, these clubs are different and they're different for, uh, for a reason. And they're probably aimed at players that are looking to make different shots with each different type of set of clubs. Hope that made sense. So we've hit long irons, we've hit short irons, only right that we hit a couple of mid irons, two six irons. You see me play off the uh, 14th tier at Carden Park. 
It's a weird one for me because um, ball flights have been very similar, to be honest with you. Um, slightly more, as you'd expect, higher launching on the weaker lofted, the 201s. And for me, for whatever reason, each time I've gone to uh, try both the clubs, I've performed better with the 201, which, like I said, no real explanation from that. Sometimes it just plays uh, tricks on the mind, this game, because the club I enjoy hitting and playing the most is the 201 for me. We've now seen some mid-irons that, again, have performed incredibly well. Not a lot more to say, is there? When a set of irons costs between four and five hundred dollars, it's fair to say that unfortunately my levels of expectation, they were pretty low, I'll be honest with you, because uh, I don't get how one brand can make a forged set of irons and a hollow bodied set of irons for such a low price. So it's fair to say my expectations have been, well, they've been blown away. Not even close to being uh, exceeded, they've been blown away because Takamo or Tacomo make very little claims in terms of technology as to how good these irons are. But in my opinion, there is literally nothing I can fault them for. They've performed incredibly well right throughout the bag in both sets of irons. So I have no idea what I'm supposed to do in terms of criticism. I look for limitations. The limitation may be that stock options are not vast. Having said that, the quality of the shaft that's being offered from KBS is obviously of a high, high quality and there's plenty enough choices. You've then got a Lampkin grip on there again, which is high, high quality. The quality of the product itself in terms of the head is as good as I have seen. So it's a real moment where I end the video with uh, a bit stuck for words in many ways. And I'm even gonna end it by hitting a four iron off the tee. That's how confident I am in these things. And this is where it could all go horribly wrong. Why have you chose to do this, And Are we taking on the water's edge as well? It's a bold end to a video. This could go in the bag, you know. Oh, oh my God.